An artist is not paid for his labor, but for his vision. I've been feeling too small. Watch the clock ticking off the wall. But tonight I'm letting it go. Spend my coin for sure. Hello, welcome to my channel. I am John Jester, your art buddy for this day. For today's episode, we are going to do an art analysis. We are going to discuss the background of my chosen artwork. So let us start. By the way, if you are wondering of the things that will help me in analyzing this art, I am going to use the four levels of formal analysis. It includes the description, analysis, interpretation, and the judgment. So let's begin analyzing the art. So this is the School of Athens of Raphael. The School of Athens is a painting made by one of the great high renaissance painter of Urbino, known as Raphael. It is a painting with a touch of fresco technique and painted around 1509 to 1511. Pope Julius II commissioned Raphael of Urbino to paint his papal residence, which is known as Stanza della Signatura in Vatican. Though it's a small room library compared to the libraries nowadays, you can see a specific area which has its own painted frescoes in a theme of laws, religion, poetry, and philosophy, which is actually the school of Athens. Each fresco represents an area which the book is being stored. Raphael uses everything that surrounds him to come up with the idea in making dimension type of frescoes. This painting is 500 centimeter in height and 770 centimeter in length. The textures of the painting are mostly solid and its value is used well on creating depth and shading. Also, you can see spaces created using a linear perspective having the hallway up to the space. The School of Athens adopts the Roman architecture where the arches are noticeable in decreasing patterns of circles. These circles repeat three times and the lines formed by the walls including the floor forms an equal balance to the painting being the two person at the center as the main focal point of this fresco painting. As analyzing the painting, I noticed that its color blends with the Asian style of painting by using a very light colors and probably based on Greek architecture design. The painting of Raphael showcased the thought debating the theories of the two Greek philosophers, Plato and Aristotle. As you can see, the great men are distributed equally in each side of the painting. On the other half, you can see Plato. How sure am I that this is Plato? It is because of the book that he is holding. This book is named Timeo. On the other side is Aristotle, holding his book Ethics. These two people are the root of the two contrasting philosophy where Plato, pointing upwards, believes in metaphysicals, the world of ideas, and Aristotle opens his hand downwards which represents the earth, who believes in observable, the material world. Next, we have Pythagoras, the great ancient mathematician who discovered the laws of harmony in music pertaining to mathematics. Balancing on the other right, we can see Euclid, which is said to be the painting's reincarnation of Bramante, a great 
architect friend of Raphael, who also proposed the new design for the St. Peter's during that time. Euclid is the one we link to geometry. Zooming in, we can see that he draws a diagram. We can also notice a man thinking on his own thoughts and said to be the painting's reincarnation of Michelangelo. This is Heraclitus. Did you know that Raphael doesn't include Heraclitus or Michelangelo in his painting? Because some says Raphael did not yet meet Michelangelo because Michelangelo is busy on making his Sistine Chapel. On the other side, we can see Ptolemy, who theorized the movements of planets, and Zoroaster, who holds the celestial orb. But who's this person looking straight at us? This is Raphael. He included himself in the painting as the representation that he painted this painting because some notice that some past painting has no signatures but only the painter's image who's actually painted also in this painting. This person is Socrates. We know that he is famous on his Socratic method of questioning. We can also notice that Raphael included mythological god and goddess. On the left, is Apollo, the god of arts, music, poetry, prophecy and truth, light, and healing. Balancing on the other side is Minerva, the goddess of wisdom and justice. This painting marks history. This fresco painting by Raphael did a great job in any art aspects. Raphael deserves to be considered as one of the greatest and highly recommended Renaissance painter of all time. He really gives justice to the Pope's wanted. That Pope Julius II wanted to considered as balanced Pope. I will consider this painting, under my art criticism, one of the greatest artworks under the deeper understanding and analyzation of all time. All of the paintings has its own history and story. It has its own interpretations. Throughout the years after it had been made, the real interpretations gradually disappear. Its own artist can only give its real interpretations. And by the creative minds of the people, with the help of written references and historical backgrounds, we can interpret it realistically. That's all for today's episode. This is John Jester, your art buddy for this day. Watch the clock ticking off the wall But tonight I'm letting it go Spend my coin for sure Wait, wait, wait If you like this video, don't forget to click the like button below And if you have questions, leave it on comment section And lastly, don't forget to subscribe Stay safe and keep smiling.